In this CSS tip, we're going to look at the CSS clip path property. Down in the description, there'll be a link to the live code that you can edit right on Scrimba. CSS lesson, we're going to be looking at the CSS clip path property. Now this property is actually pretty powerful and it uses vector graphics to hide or mask an area. On the web, it's implemented through this thing called a CSS clip path. Now, the main concept here, you can see in this little sample here, I've just got a little image here. So I've got image one and image two. So I've just got two images coming from Unsplash. And these two images are just raster graphics, right? They're just JPEGs, we can assume. And what I want to do is, let's say I want to show or hide only a portion of this image. Now I can do that with a thing called CSS masks, which we'll be looking at in an upcoming lesson. But in this one, we're going to be looking at covering a specific area with a CSS clip. So we're gonna kind of look at three ways we can do this. Now, the first way I'm gonna come over here to my CSS sheet, okay? And you can see, I've just got this set up here. All this is doing is basically aligning these images in the center here. And we're gonna add a new property. So in this first property, we're going to be affecting the first element here. So we're gonna be looking at this top image in this little sample. And we'll just write a little rule here. We're gonna say dot one. So the first image has a class of dot one and the second image has a class of dot two, okay? And let's go ahead and just say clip dash, whoops, clip dash path, okay? And then there's several options here. You can do, there are several built-in options. I can do circles, I can do ellipses, I can do polygons um, that are just built in. So I'm gonna start off with one called the polygon. So we'll just say polygon. And then the polygon is gonna ask us for a path. And these are basically points. Now I can start at zero and then go to 100% for the first point. And then I'm gonna say zero to zero for the second point then 100% to zero for the third, then 30% to 50% for this final one, and then close that off and close that off. And you can see I've created a polygon that is masking. So the polygon is actually right here, right? It's going from zero, so it goes here to here, and then it insets in here, and then down here, and then back up. So now, the only part of the image that's showing is what is directly underneath the clipping mask. Everything else outside of that clipping path is hidden. Okay, so that is uh, kind of one way to do it. Now let's look at just one more here on this bottom one. So I'm gonna do this one on dot T-W-O. Whoops, T-W-O. So on the second one, what we can do is we can actually use, if I don't wanna use the built-in ones, right? Like circle, square, uh, different things like that, I can use any SVG path and you can actually use an embedded SVG. So that's why over here in the index.html, you can see I've got these comments here. So I'm gonna actually delete these comments and you can see that I've got this SVG path and it's actually in the shape of a heart. So it's got an ID of heart path and then it's got this path down here. Anyway, this is just an SVG shape, a scalable vector graphic. If you don't know about SVGs, you may want to learn a little bit about those ahead of time. But this vector graphic, I can then use as the clip path on my second image. So let's come over here to the style.css. So on my second one, I'm going to say clip dash path. And let's go ahead and say um, URL. Whoops, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't do that. Clip path colon URL. And then we just put in the reference to that. So I'm going to say the dollar sign heart path, okay, like so. Now, what happens here, you can see the dollar sign heart path is going to reference the ID right here, this heart path of the embedded SVG, and then use that as the clip. Now, when I refresh here, you can see that that second image has that SVG heart path being used as the clipping mask for this image up here. Anyway, kind of a little bit complex, but you can see how that works. 
Now, a few things to note here. You can see that just for funsy, I'm gonna come over here to this number two. So what we're going to do is let's just add a box shadow. So we're gonna say box dash shadow. And let's just maybe say five pixels, five pixels, five pixels red, okay? So we have this box shadow, but you'll see over here in our preview that actually nothing is showing up on the preview. There is no uh, box shadow. And that's because the clip path is actually hiding it. So if I delete the clip path rule, you can see, sure enough, I do have a box shadow on that element, but the clip path remove right? Everything outside of that area is completely invisible. So, you know, elements won't show up if you have borders, you know, or paths or shadows on those things. So that's just maybe something to note. Uh, let's look at just a couple more little samples here. I'm going to delete this clip path from the heart. And just so you can see, I can do a, I'll show you a few little samples here. So I'm going to say clip path and we can do circle. So I can say 50, I'm going to do a 50 pixel circle at 0, 100. Okay, so that's the uh, area right there. And you can see there's the circle and it's clipping that out. Of course, I can move this wherever I want. Maybe I want to say 400 or 200. Maybe let's move this one to 100 pixels as well. Or you, we can even do center uh, like that. So now the center of the circle is in the middle. Maybe I want a bigger circle. I can say 150 pixels. Anyway, right, that's the circle one there. Uh, there's another one in here that's called inset. So the inset property allows me to basically pull down from any one of these four edges and sort of clip out from an edge. It's kind of like an inset shadow, but instead it's a clip. So we could do something like inset 100 pixels and 50 pixels. And you can see now it's insetting 100 on the top and bottom and 50 on the left and right. You can also specify all four sides. So I could say something like 100 and then let's say 0, 0, 0. So now it's insetting, you know, down uh, 100 pixels, but nothing on the other sides. Or maybe I could say 25 pixels here or something. Anyway, you get the idea, right? So you can specify all four sides and determine how much that's inset. And then lastly here, the last little sample I'll show you is by using one called path. Now, if you know the actual path representation, so this is the SVG shorthand path representation with all the numbers, you can just paste a path directly in here and it will just clip that specific path. But you should be able to paste in a path directly into this uh, clip path field as well and have a path, SVG or any vector path work there. So that is how the CSS clip path works. Lots of interesting uh, designs can be made with clip pathing. You can add that really on any uh, HTML element you want to.